فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Now we're going to move on to the next root cause that brings about deviation and that is al-hizbiyya al-hizbiyya means sectarianism to be fanatic towards a particular group a particular individual if a person has hizbiyya in him he's a fanatical fanatic he's got fanaticism He definitely has to go against the qa'ida, qa'ida to inkar al-munkar. Preventing evil and fighting against that which is harmful. وَالنُّصْحُ لِلَّهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ Advising the people to Allah and His Messenger. He won't be able to do that. If a person has hizbiyya in him, he can't do inkar al-munkar. Because hizbiyya is actually in a position to inkar al-munkar. وَالنُّصْحُ لِلَّهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ Advising the people and calling them to Allah and His Messenger. The reason why he can't do that is حَتَّى لَا يَتَفَرَّقَ جَمْعُ الْحِزْبِ He says that the group is going to be divided if I speak the truth. If I talk that the group... نعم. He can't. And the efforts of the group is going to become divided. So because of that... I won't be able to. So he leaves off something which is haq. The haq that he can't f- do and he can't fulfill, which is inkarul munkar. Wa nusru lillahi wa li He's not able to do it because of a group that he's from. I'm a group that he is in. Walidharika, this is something that even the ulama, that were, the early scholars have pointed this out. Because Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah and other than him. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah says in his kitab, Iqtidda'u sirat al-mustaqim li mukhalafati ashab al-jahim. The first volume, page 86, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says the following. He says, وَهَذَا يُبْتَلَى بِهِ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْمُنْتَسِبِينَ إِلَىٰ طَائِفَةٍ مُعَيَّنَةٍ فِي الْعِلْمِ He said this is tested with many people who attribute themselves to a particular group, a particular sect in knowledge, or with deen or in the religion. They attribute themselves to a particular group in matters of knowledge or a deen or in the religion such as مِنَ الْمُتَفَقِّهَةِ those who claim, them, claim to have fiqh أو الْمُتَصَوِّفَةِ or those who claim to have tasawwuf أو غيرهم or other than them. So for example you find fiqh issues meaning what? أهل المذهب people of tamadhub and أهل التصوف who follow a particular tariqa or other than that, for us today, it's going to be all the ahzabs that we see today. Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Hizb al-Tahrir, al-Tabliq, Hadith wa la haraj. Those, all those groups, if you look at them today, they fall under this. Or ila ra'is al-mu'azzam indahum fi al-dini, ghayr al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or they attribute themselves to a leader who is respected in the issues of the religion, other than the Prophet. So there's a particular person now. Before the Hizbiya was for a group, or it could actually be for a particular person. Pay attention to this. That the issue of the thing that the person is attributing themselves to is not issues of ilm or deen, or it is ila ra'isin mu'adhamin, a leader that they honor. Here means a scholar, a person of knowledge based. So there's Fulan is a sheikh of this country, for instance. Everybody has ta'adhim for him. Fiddin in matters of the religion. That person isn't a prophet. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَقْبَلُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ So they don't accept the religious matters. رَأْيًا وَلَا وَرِوَايَةً Opinions or narrations إِلَّا مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ طَائِفَةٌ Except if it comes from the ta'ifa that they attribute themselves to. The ta'ifa can either be here, the group that they are from, or... They only accept it if the shaykh that they, have, that they respect, that they honor, that they look up to, says it. But they don't know ma tu jibuhu ta'ifatu, that which their group necessitates from their belief. 
مع أن دين الإسلام يوجب اتباع الحق مطلقا Even that though the religion of Islam it obliges in following the truth unrestrictedly riwayatan wa ra'yan in terms of narrations well in terms of opinions min ghayri ta'yin shakhs without specifying a person aw ta'ifatin or a group ghayri rasul ghayri ghayri rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam other than the messenger alayhi salatu wasallam so what shaykh al-islam tayyib is saying that the people are tested tested here means that they are tried with this issue is that they attribute themselves to a particular group in matters of the religion and they say we're from this ta'ifa we're from this group we're Hizb al-Tahrir for instance okay and there's a sheikh within the group that leads and runs the program and runs everything huh that mu'adhim in the group of course is not the messenger alayhi salatu salam so they don't accept anything unless the group and that it comes from the leader and then the group execute what he says. So the truth is only what comes from here. If anybody comes outside that's not part of the group and says, Ya ikhwatil kiram, this is the shara, this is the ruling of the sharia in this matter, فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَقْبَلُونَ They don't accept that. And they reject it. And they turn it away. They turn away from it. Pay attention to this. When in reality Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that the religion of Islam commands us to follow the truth unrestrictedly from whoever it comes from whether it is narrations. So here means that if the narrations come from Ahlul Kufa, or it comes from Ahlul Hijaz, or it comes from Basra, it doesn't, or Misr, or other than that, no land is given virtue in terms of knowledge being taken from it, another place, or a group. It can be a Shafi'i, give us a, we take it from him. It can be a Hanbali, it can be a, there's no restriction of it being taken from a particular group. Or even min ghayri ta'ayyin shakhsin, or a specific individual. You can't say, I'm not going to take this opinion unless Sheikh Fawzan says it. Al-Ghayr sahih if another alim has said it, why are you going to restrict the acceptance of the truth on a particular person? That's even if the, that's if the person is an imam min aima to sunnah. It's an imam min aima to sunnah. Sheikh Salah al Fawzan, right now, if he's, he's an imam, he's a man of ilm and rusukh, it, we still don't restrict the uh, haq to him. If another alim brings evidences, we take it. Hatta if a talib ilm brings the truth, we take it. We don't restrict it to a Sheikh Salah al Fawzan, or we don't restrict it to Sheikh Abdul Muhsa Abbad. We don't restrict it to a particular person. Let alone if that person is a misguided person. Why are you going to restrict it to him? Aslan, he's not even a person of knowledge, and he's not a person of what? Authority. The matter gets worse. Or you're specifically saying, only when this, my group says this, I take it. And anyone who today looks at the groups that are out there, will clearly, if he's a munsif, if he's a munsif, if he's a munsif, fair person, you will realize that this is very common on so many different people. That they will only take the truth from a person who respects their sheikh. Khalas. Do you respect my teacher? Do you respect this sheikh man? You don't say anything about him, huh? Okay, barakallahu I remember one time I was invited at a masjid. They invited me. And I went to the masjid and they said to me, what do you say about so and so? This is not spubs. So many people think this was be spubs. La, it's the other side of spubs. They invited me and they interrogated me regarding a particular person. I said, Yaqi, I don't know the person you're talking about. I don't know much about him. I have no knowledge of this particular individual. I don't know him. And they said to me, okay, no problem. As long as you don't say anything bad about him. So, this issue of hizbiya. Aqdul wala'i wal bara, basing love and hate on a particular individual. Ya ikhwa hadihi, this is one of the things that what? It's a root cause that deviate people from the straight path, from the haqq. Because why? فَإِنَّ الْحَيَّ لَا تُؤْمَنُ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ فَإِنَّ الْحَيَّ لَا تُؤْمَنُ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ The one who is alive, you cannot assure that they are free from trials and tribulations. How many people who had knowledge and understanding of the religion, but they apostated or they turned away from the religion. If you connect your religion to the people, then your religion is going to be destroyed. Are you with me, brothers? What did the Salaf used to say? They used to say, this is a very common statement of theirs. They used to say, Learn the truth, then you will know who is carrying the truth and who is following the truth. Don't do the opposite. 
that tr try to find the truth through the people. That basically this person is the truth, so anything that's in accordance to what he said is the truth. That's not right. That's not right. That's wrong. That is the hizbiyah that the Shaykh rahimahullah is talking about it. Now this can be spread on different spectrums. It can be spread on the overwhelming majority of Muslims today. That's the issue they have. ولذلك الشيخ العلامة فقيه الزمان محمد صالح العثيمين رحمه الله he said in his book كتاب العلم he has a book called the book of knowledge right and it's translated in English he says يجب على طالب العلم أن يتخلى عن الطائفية والحزبية بحيث يعقد الولاء والبراء على طائفة معينة أو على حزب معين فهذا لا شك خلاف منهج السلف السلف الصالح ليس أحزابا بل هم حزب واحد ينضون تحت قول الله عز وجل هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل محمد بن صالح العثيمين says it is obligatory on every student of knowledge rather I can say that this is obligatory on every single Muslim but the author said on a student of knowledge because the book is talking about and is talking is addressing who the students of knowledge what is it that they have to adorn themselves with and يتخلّى عن الطائفية والحزبية he has to get rid of and dismiss and eradicate from himself sectarianism. بحيث يعقد الولاء والبراء. So what's the sectarianism that the author is talking about? بحيث يعقد الولاء والبراء على طائفة معينة أو على حزب معين. Where he bases allegiance and he bases disassociation on a particular group. فهذا لا شك خلاف منهج السلف. This is this opposes the منهج السلف. This opposes منهج السلف. السلف الصالح ليس أحزابا. The salaf al-salih were not groups. هم حزب واحد. They are one particular group. They are the Muslimun. They are the Mu'minun, the Muslimun. ينضون تحت قول الله تعالى. And all of them what brought them together was what? هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل. Allah تبارك وتعالى says in that verse. We have called you believers, Muslimin, before. Look at the statement of the author here, which he says, بحيث يعقد الولاء والبراء على طائفة معينة أو على حزب معين. Today there are people, if you say to them, يا أخي, this طائفة, this particular group, is misguided. And there are many ملاحظات. There are many mistakes that they are held against, in which they have gone against the kitab and the sunnah. And they have gone against the ijma of the salaf of this ummah. Ijma'at that they have, they have headbutted. So what can we say? So why have you still? Why are you still fanatic about this particular group? The minute you do that, you lose allegiance. You lose. You lose the brotherhood. That you lose disassociation. Based on what? Based on a particular group. You go to a Brelvi, you say why. You go to a Diabandi, you say to him why. You go to a Hizb you say why. All of them, you ask them why. Why this particular group? These are the mistakes that this group has. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ya hadith wa la haraj. The list goes on. I'm just giving you just a, a, a minute, a very small amount of mistakes that they have. Mujalladat, volumes have been written about this. If it was the books and the stuff that has been written on it, if you threw it in the ocean, it may, may, the ink might uh, change the ocean. Akhi, it's too much. You're still fanatic about it. You're still consistent in arguing for them. And then guess what you lose? You lose al-wala'i wal-bara. So all of the narrations that they were saying before that of what? Akhi, smile in the face of your Muslim brother. Ya akhi, you know, show love to the Muslim belief. That all goes. All of those hadiths, all of it goes. So when they were saying to you, Akhi, smile in the face of the believer, they met their group. That's what they meant. They meant their particular group and the people who are of their group. Al-Alama Bakr ibn Abdullah Abu Zayd rahimahullah has a book that deserves to be studied and I promise and inshallah ta'ala I will. It's one of the books in my mind that I'm going to go through which is حكم الانتماء إلى الفرق والأحزاب والجماعات الإسلامية. He authored a book about attributing yourself to groups. نعم. Attributing yourself to sex and groups. He wrote a book on this, Sheikh Bakr ibn Abdullah Abu Zayd. Rahimahullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. And as I said, inshallah, we're going to go through it. When he was mentioning the harms that it has and the problems that it has, attributing yourself to a group, 
give it allegiance and love and, uh, and disassociation association based on the group. He said the following. He said, وَفِي الْحِزْبِيَّةِ بَعْثُ حَرْبِ الْكَلِمَةِ بِنَصْبِ عَوَامِ الْإِنْتِصَارِ وَالتَّرْجِيحِ لِأُصُولِ كُلِّ حِزْبٍ وَرَدِّ مَا يُخَالِفُهُ He said, when it comes to the issue of sectarianism, I'm a group, your group, is that the person is going to reject the truth and that which is right. All because why? All because it goes against the usul of the hizb. It goes against the foundations in which the group is built on. So any evidences that come, they look at it through the lenses of their group. Any evidences which they can scrutinize and they can bend, they'll bend it for the group. Those evidences that are not able to be bent, they're too strong and they're too stiff, it won't be able to be bent. يُضَعِفُونَهُ They weaken it. Or they discredit those who bring those evidences. They take method, methods and طُرُقْ This is the reality of it. So hizbiyyah is one of the root causes that brings about deviation. And a person who has hizbiyyah in him, that individual you will, t- you will find without a shadow of a doubt. One of the things that they hate is what? Inkarul munkar. And why my beloved brothers and sisters, Salafiyyin are ones that even though they're together, if one does a mistake, he refutes him. And he's happy with the refutation. Because what matters to them is not individuals. There's not a, a, a group that has to be protected. Ya akhi, the haq is what brought them together. And it's that haq in which each person is trying to make sure that it's apparent. Well, I should tell you something very powerful. A Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin did a mistake one time when he was talking about an issue pertaining to Babel Asma'i wa Sifat. Sheikh Muhammad Salih Uthaymin, when it came to the issue of Allah being above the throne, he said a statement which we don't want to go into right now. When he did a mistake, Sheikh Humud ibn Abdullah Tawijiri came across it. So he wrote a refutation against Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. He wrote a refutation, and the refutation is matbu' mutadawal, is present. Against who? Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. Ibn Baz put a muqaddimah on the um, taqdim of the book. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin heard that Humud Ibn Abdullah was busy with a refutation against him. He requested Humud Ibn Abdullah to send him the refutation. Ibn Uthaymin read it and he put a taqdim for him on the book. And that book is manshur, spread today with the taqdim of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin and also Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Abdullah Ibn Baz. The reason is because they're not a hizb, which you have to look after a group. The matter is ilharul haq, make the haq clear to the people. Let the people be upon clarity and what is right from what is wrong. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin was striving to what was right. If he got it wrong, his brother, who is his mirror, his reflection, corrected him. He's happy. And that's praiseworthy. They, on the other hand, the Hizbiyin, they will look at that and say, look at you guys fighting. They will use it as a, to discredit you. And say, look at you fighting one another. Ya Akhi is not. Just like the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka mimma sal'a khalidan. Oh Allah, I free myself from what Khalid did. The Messenger was clarifying the haqq and telling the people what was right. And that what Khalid ibn al-Walid, uh, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, what did was wrong. And the Messenger would do that, alayhi salatu wasalam. Kadhaba Abu Sanabil. Abu Sanabil lied. The Messenger would clarify it, alayhi salatu wasalam. All of this for what reason? Ya akhi, idharul haqq. This truth has to be protected. But the people of the Hizb, the Haqq is not as important to them as the group is. The group is more important. The individual is more important than the truth. So the honor and the reputation of the person takes precedence over the truth. وَلَا يُبَالُونَ So they don't really care if the truth is dismissed or it is destroyed. To the extent that when somebody comes out and then makes sure that the truth is brought out to the people and he tries to explain the truth to the people, he is called an overzealous person. So yeah, fulan, overzealous. He's got too much zeal in him, huh? Instead of what? 
instead of because if they accept that from you people are going to say Akhi, five years you've been doing that yourself <laughs> you've been fooling us then until Allah brought this person so the people are going to see his mistakes and his shortcomings they're going to turn away from him and they're going to listen to this person so he has to be min aladdi a'da'i from his greatest enemies and it takes a lot of hard work Allah, and it takes a lot of sincerity and a lot of iman to say that I was wrong and Fulan was right. It takes a lot out of a person. It takes a lot and this is a sign of a mukhlas, sincere person. And this is what our scholars have shown. This is what our scholars have shown. Sheikh Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, al-Allama Ibn al-Qayyim, in one of his books I read a story that um, a teacher was asked a question. A teacher was asked a question and the teacher wasn't able to answer the question so he said La adri. I don't know and this is a characteristic a Muslim should have when a question is asked and put to you and you don't know it you should say La adri, I don't know the scholars they used to say the person who does not say La adri, when he doesn't know Usibat maqatilu. destruction is on his way the like scholars wrote a book on it just one book is called uh, La adri, I don't know and he brought the statements of all the ulama who said La Adri. And as you know, Imam Malik, a man came up to him and asked him questions. He travelled from a very far distance and he asked him questions, 40 something different riwayat and different narrations meant different, mentioned different figures. But every question that was put to him, he kept saying La Adri, La Adri, La Adri, La Adri, La Adri, La Adri. One or two of the questions he answered. So the man said to him, I travelled all this far for you so you can tell me. And Imam Malik, rahimahullah, said La Adri. Now somebody would say, yeah, if I say La Adri, I don't know, people are going to think I'm a jahil, I don't even know the religion. Yeah, you don't even know the basics of the deen. Yeah, this is simple stuff, you don't know it? Yeah, don't let that get to you. Don't let that get to you, know that you're saving yourself from a greater destruction. It's better I am ignorant of this particular issue and I say I don't know and I come across as an ignorant person than putting myself forward in answering a question which in reality I didn't know and I got it wrong. And then I come to Allah wa ta'ala and I get punished for speaking without knowledge. Don't speak about that which you have no knowledge of and that you don't understand. ولذلك, the scholars they say لا أدري نصف العلم. Somebody came, La Adri is half of knowledge, right? Someone said it, say it twice, full, you got full knowledge. La Adri, La Adri, you have a complete knowledge. What it means is that when you say La Adri, you are actually, you've come with half of it, which is that you know, you don't know, so you're now going to be pursuing it. Jahlu Murakkab is a problem, right? A compounded ignorance is that a person won't move forward because he believes he knows. So what the scholars mean by La Adri is that once you say, I don't know, the second step is what? Go and embark on the path for, for gaining it. So that means, it's as they say, a good dream is half the bottle. To dream it is wanting something. The next thing that's missing from you is the execution of your dream. So that's why you just have to come with the second half. Anyways, the teacher said, La adri, I don't know when, he, when the question was put to him. So what happened was that a student of his said, uh, I know. Ibn al-Qayyim is mentioned in, in his books. The student came and I said, he said, I know. So the teacher took it very personal, became, became very upset and very annoyed with how dare does the student speak in a matter which I am the teacher who said, I don't know. How dare? So he planned to punish the student and make the student suffer because of this statement of his. So the student responded to the teacher when he saw that the teacher got upset. He said to the teacher, you are more, you, oh my teacher, you are not more knowledgeable than Sulaiman. And I am not more ignorant than the Hudhud. Didn't Allah say in the Quran, when Sulaiman was looking for the Hudhud, he said, Mali la ara al -hudhuda. Why is it that I don't see the Hudhud? I'm kind of in the or is it from the, it's not here today, yeah? Because Suleiman commanded everybody to come together. And Hutut is not here. So he, got, he went against who's, 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 who's command? 
سليمان سي سيد ماليا لا ارى الهود هود ام كان من الغائبين لا اعذبنه عذابا شديدا او لا اذبحنه او لا ياتيني بسلطان مبين I'm going to punish the hudhud. And the way to punish birds is that you not to kill it. So he said, لَوْ عَذِّبَنَوْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا أَوْ لَأَذْبَحَنَوْ So the way he was planning to, scholars, some of them mentioned that he was going to peel all of its wings off, uh, sorry, its feathers off, and just put it out in the sun. And it will burn to death out of thirst and, and tie it down. Or I'm going to kill it. Or I'm going to slaughter it. Anyways, the point is, all is going to come with to me and based on Ibn Abbas's tafsir, and this is known as tafsir Bikulyat al Ma'ani, which is that every place that the word Sultan comes in the Quran, it means hujja, poof. We've taken this. So he will come to me with a proof, meaning knowledge based argument. So when did the Hutud come? Hutud came back to Sulaiman. And he said to Sulaiman, uh, I have encompassed a matter, I mean, I have come to know of a matter. You don't know of this issue. And Hudhud is not as noble as Nabi Sulaiman. So the student is trying to say to the teacher, if Hudhud came to know something that Sulaiman didn't, and I am as individual right about to say that. So the Arabs, they say, Aqhamah, we silence the teacher, sah? Aqhamah, we silence the teacher. The point I'm saying to you here is, is that that's how the religion is. The truth is mentioned and it's uttered and it's said. And every single person strives to making sure that the truth is respected. And when it comes to dealing with the scholars and their mistakes, we've already spoken about that. Just because a scholar has done a mistake, that does not mean you put him down. But that doesn't also mean that the truth is being silent. Sil we are silent about the truth because of his honor. Pay attention. Just because of the sheikh's honor, the truth is, we say that, if we say that it's going gonna, it's gonna to discredit the sheikh, so we're not going to speak about it. That's incorrect. The truth is spread. It's told. His mistake is told to the people that it was wrong what he said. But his reputation and his honor is not put down. So the people of a group, that's one thing which they are unable to do, which is they can't do inkar al munkar. And nusru lillahi wa li some of the shocking things. Wallahi, brothers, you guys are youngsters, brothers. A lot of you guys are not aware of these groups. I, have, I, I, I come from a country where this is very common. There are many groups. We have al-Itisab. They used to be known as al-Itihad, which is a branch from al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin. The point is that Look what they will do when the person gets out of hand. Like sometimes not everybody's the same. Somebody would see the munkar, he'll be silent for the group. And then he sees another munkar, he'll be silent because of the group. But as time goes on, he can't handle it anymore. So he comes out and he writes a bayan. And says, Look, this is wrong. This is wrong. That's what they do. When he does that, they, dis they disassociate themselves from him. And they alienize him and marginalize him and push him to the side and they tell the people, this man was always uh, overzealous and he was always, uh, he was never right in his mind and they would attach negative connotation and negative things to him. The question arises that, why are you doing it now? Let's just say hypothetically, you guys are right. He was always like that. Why now? Why was it when he was in the group, you never did that? Because in the group, every batin and every munkar can be there. But now he's harming the group, not that he's harming the truth. So even when they do refute that person or they criticize him, don't take it from them. They're just doing it because he went, he went, he went, against, he went, he went against the group. And I'll show you somebody who was who part of a group or is part of the same ideology. He was with them and they were with him. And he done takfir of the group. I, I don't want to mention the name, but there's a, a, a Somalian uh, takfiri today who comes out on YouTube and stuff and he, he has... And he lives in Nairobi. Those who know what I'm saying will know. There was a Somali there's a group in Somalia known as Al-Atisam. He done takfir of them. Ala Bakri Abihim. Ala Bakri Abihim. Every member he for, he for takfir on them. Takfir Mu'ayyan, specifically the Kufar. He permitted their blood. He used to be part of them. It was once upon a time a person they used to use as a marja. That's what they used to do. Ah. But the minute he what? 
He started to do takfir on them. He became a what? A takfiri kharijiyu. Is that something a Salafi would take from them? A person who is Salafi would take from them. Is that something a Salafi would take from them? A person who studied the books of the Sunnah? La abadan no. So he knows by default that you guys are refuting him on the different basis of what we were refuting him for in the first place. Yeah? You're refuting him on the basis that he's actually now come to the Hizb and the group. And you're just fighting with him based on his leaving of the Hizb and him doing takfir of the Hizb. But our issue is of the, the, the i'tiqad and the belief of this person and the haqq in which he has gone against. So pay attention to that. Hizbiyya, my beloved brothers and sisters, it extinguishes the work of what? Of inkar wa munkar wa nus'u lillahi wa li rasulihi Just all of that for what reason? Hatta la yatafarraqa jam'u al-hizb That the voice and the, the, of the, the group, the group Even sometimes they will beautify it for you And they'll say to you, Akhi, why are you dividing the Muslims? Akhi, I'm not dividing the Muslims Who said that all the Muslims are ikhwan al-Muslim, you know? Who said that all of the Muslims are hizb, i'tisam? Who said that to you? Where did you get that from? I'm just speaking about a group. I'm speaking about a misguided group of people. So this is very important. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude on that last uh, root cause, which is al-hizbiyah. And inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow's session and tomorrow's lecture, I'm going to carry on the other remaining root causes that bring about deviation, inshallah ta'ala. Any mistakes that I have come with and faults or errors, is from me and shaitan and Allah, his, Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.